Good morning and welcome to day, day number four of the Play vs. Fall 2020 High School Championship. We have reached our final three contenders of the day. It is the Eastern Region, Central Region, and Pacific Region. Yesterday we saw the conclusion of, I believe, four or five matches. It was Arkansas, Georgia, Texas, and the Mountain Region, so it was four. I can count. Texas and Georgia, who had both four ones, but at the end of the day, we have seen best of sevens go all the distance this weekend, and we have seen matches get 4-0 swept throughout day one and now we come into day number four with only three contestants remaining of course i'm spaceman joined by a new face on the desk brody is off today and that means we bring in the super talented and uber wonderful crack shot welcome how you doing and how's everything going i'm doing great now that you've given me that high praise it's been a while uh since i've been on a desk for rocket league but i'm very excited to see the action that these uh young whippersnappers can bring at us let's see what they can uh show us today three series i'm excited and uh, ready to add some flavor. Yeah, so uh, again, these are the final three matches of the day, and that means that after this, that's essentially all that's wrapped up. The Play vs. Fall 2020 High School Championship is done. The finalists have all been seated into their respective uh, home states, and representatives have been won. And uh, at the moment, we have we have crowned a champion in every single state, but today we actually have an interesting story. Central Region, uh, their high school has two different works they have two different rosters so uh, uh the winner of that gets to represent their high school but either way i mean carmel high school will be the representative of the central region but regardless if you want to sign up for the play spring the play versus spring series go ahead and sign up now on the play versus website because the spring series in terms of uh, sign ups are now live you can get a chance to, to sign up and compete against uh in teams in valorant rocket league smite etc 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 now i believe we have game one ready to go so with that said further ado let's get into game number one of our again best of seven series up first eastern region you're on the clock it's cannon school versus john carroll high school cannon school will be in blue john carroll will be in orange you guys know the deal seven games will we go there maybe are we going to get there possibly off the first goal though it's cannon high school opening up the game with the lead I like that statement piece right there just going straight for the demo off of the off the draw there I'd like to see it and then, oh another one looks like uh looks like cannon came to play it certainly did and again these players have been waiting uh since well i can't when did we start it seems like 2020 time again eludes me it must have been thursday or friday but either way plenty of time to uh practice and for a lot of these players i've actually spoken to a couple of them on twitter uh they were happy with their performance some not so much but i mean we've seen 2v3s throughout this tournament we saw a team that was literally 2v3ing their way through a best of seven and they smoked the other team so that was surprising but uh some standouts from this weekend looking at vigil you're looking at bostonator who competed against each other went to seven games and vigil's team came out on top and i say that as vigil's team because he quite literally hard carried his team through the tournament um you look at uh, players like Skyrex yesterday, but a lot of this has been like one of two ways. You either have a team that focuses on one individual who steps up and kind of carries the load, or everyone collectively moves their feet through the mud and it doesn't look great, no. Is it clean? No. But they get the job done and that's what matters most. So going into this series, I'm expecting uh, team orchestrated hits like we've seen throughout the weekend. But if one person steps up and essentially takes away the action, I have no problem uh, commenting on one person kind of carrying the load as you will so let's get into the rest of game one still about three minutes to go here nowhere near halftime at the moment still a 1-0 lead as well as we've seen a couple of traded shots in the corner back and forth but the defense remains on point for the moment that ball will get escaped out to midfield and we dump it up to the sidewall carrying out it will be john carroll high school more importantly jack trying to bring it over second touch not quite there would have loved to see that ball float down a little bit more in front of the box before you go for that second extension. But we go back to the corner on the opposite side, and Benji has to slow this one down again in front of the net, and it doesn't seem like the offense has orchestrated a clean look just yet. Another shot on net gets saved away. It's been entirely a defensive battle here for John Carroll early. After losing that opening goal just so early in the game, it seems like they're just really having trouble getting anything going in the offensive zone for an extended period of time and so right now it's just cannon driving the bus and we'll see how far they can take it of course it would help for them to put something up because knowing rocket league you can put up three minutes of constant pressure and one time up the other way you might find yourself down a goal yeah rocket league is like one of the most punishing esports out there regardless of how well you play all it takes is one small mistake and then you're just like why did we spend five minutes doing that when we needed to score and we didn't and you know some of our 
on point, quote unquote, expert analysis yesterday and for this weekend was, hey, outscore your opponents. And it sounds really stupid, and it is, but it's also true because if you don't, you're going to lose. So for a lot of these teams, it comes down to practice, execution, and, and finding polish that wasn't really quite there this weekend. But on the other side, we've seen a lot of incredible performances. And it's funny that all of the individual hard carries have come from people who rank Supersonic Legends. So a little bit of a tell of the tape there as uh, season one is still underway. That one's going to be Ooh. crossed out. Couldn't beat the defender there, but the ball does all the work. John Carroll High School will tie it up and not this at one apiece with a minute 50 to play. Finally, they're getting on the board here. That was a really nice one, too. And it's not a lot that Greg could do coming back. So many times you think that, oh, I got this angle. I got this transition. I'm going to be able to do it. But, uh, you know, I've been burned in my career on that fair share of kind of hits. So... I think we've I all been that, there. I feel that pain. I just We collectively feel that pain. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Speaking of which, one of you, one of the box. But I'd love to see Slark is Santa keep that on the hood of his car and maybe try to bring it up a little bit closer before going for the flip. But still, tie game. And we expect this series to at least go. I would oh, love yeah. to see five, six games. But you never know with these schools. Speaking of which, though, 2-1 as uh, Greg, that's what I'm going to call him because I don't know how to read that, flips it over and uh, gets the, the little pre-jump to meet the pass. It's a 2-1 lead. Yeah, that was nice. And Greg's going to like that one, too. That one's good for the morale after, you know, just coming so close to saving the tying goal. For him to go top cheese like that and just shuffle one home himself, that's big. Now, you have been around in eSports for many, many years. And, and I would count 2020 as like 5, 10 years. So we'll say that you've been around eSports for at least 15 years because time makes no sense anymore. But you've seen multiple teams in both stressful situations and breakdowns in some of the highest moments what would you say is like a number one factor for a lot of these young players playing in a tournament like this where yeah it's not the highest of stakes but getting a chance to really play against good competition and represent your state in a tournament what would you say is like the the number one factor in their comms that needs to be that needs to be consistent for them to be successful well, I mean, as much as the stakes might be considered low by general esports standards, mm -hmm. this is this is pretty high stakes for what you know high sure. school esports has to offer. So, uh, the composure is, is key. Being able to treat this like it's any other game on a Friday night with your pals, you know, that's 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 probably the most important thing I think uh, for these young guys because it's really easy to get flustered in these situations, and as soon sure. as that happens, you're off your game and. All it takes is one of you guys to, you know, one weak link and then all of a sudden the other team could exploit you. So learning the composure is, is really important, I think. Sure, absolutely. And 10 seconds left, there was a shot again. Can't save that one. That's essentially gonna be the nail in the coffin. As a Cannon School have eight seconds to go and yeah, it's winnable, I know, but with a 3-1 lead at this moment, I think, relatively speaking, seeing how the rest of the matches have played out this weekend, and how many of these situations we have seen, we might be able to call it here, given who wins the kickoff. It will be Cannon, and at this moment, mathematically almost impossible. And now it is. So, Cannon Blue, or Cannon School in blue, they will take game number one in our best of seven. However, it, it was not a blowout by any stretch, and John Carroll, not out of it, obviously, by any stretch. Only one game, but looking across the board, he had a goal for every single individual. So a team hat trick, we love that. But uh, for John Carroll, I think, again, just kind of controlling the pace. There wasn't a whole lot that I saw that was a mistake or that was not well played. It was just control the pace of the game, continue to find a way to to weather the storm on defense. And if you get lucky, like you did on that breakaway goal, take advantage of their over eagerness past midfield. But, uh, but yeah, just just it's weird. I feel like I'm a, like a softball coach for like six year olds. But like, just stay in the game. Just keep yourself in the game. You never know. Yeah, it's a long series. And I mean, that wasn't the best showing. Um from John Carroll, but you know, Cannon, they took advantage of that early lead and you know, maybe not giving that up and trying to control the pace of play as, as a defensive team. It seems that's like what that's what we're going to get from them today. So, um, they did defend for a while. I think they had like two minutes of pressure in their end and then they just went up and scored and kept things tied. But after that, it just came down to Cannon pressuring and, and punishing mistakes a little bit better. Absolutely. Let's get into game two. You guys know the deal. We don't like to waste time. Neither do the players. Players want to move on through this series, and I don't blame them because there's a lot on the line. Again, this is about a lot. This a lot of this is about rep for sure. Like being able to brag to your friends. Hey, I won the I, I won the the chance to represent my state. I beat uh, someone else in our region to to become our play versus fall 2020 high school champions. 
Uh, but also, these are the breeding grounds. These are the stomping grounds for a lot of young talent because from here you can then, you know, uh, translate a lot of this talent and you can start to formulate a, a presence in other high school leagues, but also you start to get scouted here. This is where the CRL comes in. These are where the collegiate programs start looking for the next wave of talent. Uh, and if you have something like this to put on your resume and say, hey, I have film of me competing for a high school championship and it's, it's good film, you have a very good chance of getting some support in the collegiate region. So uh, this is, you know, outside of the tournament itself, it's got some implications that are Ooh. huge. There's almost a ricochet that goes through. And uh, for John Carroll, definitely a type of goal that you would love to build on with momentum and all the right stuff. But for now, we still sit 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, it's all about the composure, though, just like we were talking about last game. I mean, you can't get shook by the fact that that one probably should have been a goal. And now attack going the other way. I mean, ooh, careful moments at both ends here. Who's going to strike first is really the question at this moment. Both teams showing us a, a little bit more offense, I think, you know, throwing defense to the wayside, at least while it's 0-0 zero, zero here. Demo on the, la on the back. That one's a little bit high. Oh, is it going to go in? I don't think so. Slow roller in traffic kind of hangs there. And characteristically, usually that ball should get punched in. But still, we sit with no score here in game two. Cannon High School, 1-0 lead in the series. There's a shot. I oh, love that one. Benji definitely needed to hit that at the most pivotal of times. We were starting to get close to the halfway mark here in game two. And this is the first time John Carroll will hold the lead in this series. So love to see the, the swing of events now as they have a lead to uh, play with a little bit. You know, it's only one goal and they would love to get two, obviously. But for the moment, got to feel comfortable in the field. Yeah, I mean, you do definitely. That was some great anticipation by Benji there. He realized that minutes really had only one play. He wasn't going to be able to get a lot of power on that. So passing it directly down for uh, a one timer clear was really his only play. And Benji just beat them to the ball. Self taking it away. Try to serve it towards the backboard. I like the idea. There's the cross. That should be a goal, but Slark gets in front of it. The recognition on the defense to understand that there will be a cross coming in and cut off the lane. Take it back the other way. And we've talked a lot about John Carroll High School. On the opposite side, we have not spoken much about Cannon as they have been kept in the defensive half for what seems like two minutes now when we hit the halfway mark in game number one. Minutes. Interesting game. That one's going to fall down from the backboard. It'll get taken away. And gives it right back to the defense. So John Carroll holding strong on the defensive line and limiting the, the opportunities. The time possession for Cannon High School. They take it back to the blue half. And it looks like for the moment, it's going to put shot after shot if they can, toying with the defense if they will. About two minutes to go here left in game number two. This is kind of odd. It's almost like a mirror image of game number one where... Mm. We saw Cannon, you know, control the pace of play. Oh, could this be it? Nope. Another good defensive play from Cannon, just keeping this a one-goal game, keeping it as close as possible. They've had a few individual chances, but I'd like to see them get in a little bit more on the teamwork that rewarded them so heavily in game one. It's interesting. This weekend has been, there's a shot. Oh, <laughs> top crossbar. Uh, once again, the greatest fourth defender in the history of this game. Uh, this weekend's been interesting because a lot of teams will come out really hot in game one and then stone cold in game two, and then games three, four, five, and six, they'll just smoke the entire field. So it makes no sense. We've seen opposites of that. Here's a carry taken away at the top of the bar and pitched out. There's a follow up shot. Nice floater. That's going to be there for the score. Doesn't look like it. That one's going to ricochet around and we go back to midfield. And we've seen teams who. You know, lose game one, and then the other team just gets cold, and the and you know the team that is down a game comes back and wins four one or something. It's just been, it's been a weird weekend of, of just unpredictable matches. That one's going to sky itself to the ceiling. Minutes to the corner as well. We'll grab boost with it. We go back to midfield as well. The transition starts to swing out, but running point for the moment is Slark. Leaves it for a teammate. Double commit comes in for John Carroll. So they get the pinch to clear some space, but. You start bunching up on the right side of the field, which means all it takes is one long clear and you're dust on the field. Slark, not really the touch he wanted, but Greg is there for support. Taken away, and at the moment, John Carroll are just cutting off all of the passes that might formulate, and they're just trying to shut this game down. Yeah, just maintaining possession here in these last waning moments of the game is going to be the, exactly what John Carroll wanted to do. 
they're just they're content keeping it in the corner and continuing this pressure 14 seconds on the clock and not a lot left that cannon's going to be able to do a last minute attempt here maybe probably not it's not looking like it it's going to be john carroll i think to take game number two unless they can miraculously keep this ball up which for the moment hold on a minute you're gonna play that one towards the backboard. Second touch. Oh, that that could have been a goal right there had that last defender not been in position. And the best look of the day comes with zero seconds. So John Carroll surviving, I'll say, in game number two. They tie the series up one apiece. And you know what? Aside from the first goal, they really just played the game not to lose. They played to, to cut off all the passes to not give uh Cannon School any any opportunity to to move throughout the field and create an opportunity or create a passing lane and from there i mean john carroll just kind of controlled the pace a lot like what we said cannon blue did or cannon school did excuse me in game one yeah i mean that was exactly the name of the game right and you know we saw in the game number one that john carroll was going to be going more for uh, a defensive play style and there's nothing wrong with that if that's you know playing to your strengths but you cannot make a lot of mistakes or leave a lot of open floating balls in the middle because uh you know they got punished for it a couple of times and uh this game they just did not they got on the scoreboard early and then they just maintained that pressure up field and you know it looks like they're they're attacking really but they're they're playing a defensive setup by keeping yep. the ball in their opposition's corner absolutely well with that said let's get into game three and uh, this moment, we see the tie series. More importantly, I mean, look, winner of this goes up 2-1, sure. Nobody can write anyone out. But uh, we're getting close to the linchpin game. We're getting close to the, hey, this is the momentum swing. So if you go up 2-1, that one's going to waterfall. Oh, that's dangerous. If you go up 2-1, and then you're sitting in a good position to go up 3-1, we all know what happens then. But still, this is an important game for both teams. Kind of sets the precedent for the series. Off the start, though, Cannon getting much more aggressive and much more comfortable in that orange half than what we saw basically in the entirety of game two. As Nerfa have not talked about him yet in this series. It's really just been one or two players on the other side, Benji and Jack for John Carroll, who have been carrying the weight of the ball at midfield. I feel like Nerfa's been sitting back on defense this one, however. One in stalemate, and we follow in. Jack getting close to the net with that one. Nerfa gonna try to play that off the side of the backboard, but we get taken away. And for the moment, Slark is going to slow it down. But these 50 wins are so awkward because every time a team gets possession, they just kind of give the ball away. And then they give it right back to the defense. Second touch not going to come in. And we still sit in this blue half. Finally, we get it back to midfield. Well, that's a nice ceiling touch there. But good defense once again from John Carroll. Very good at doubling up on the back end there to ensure that none of these dangerous balls, you know, apart from the first game, rather, none of these dangerous balls are ending up in the back of their net. And they swing this run around. That is the question for the moment. They're missing some of these crucial second touches. On the other side, Cannon, I mean, we haven't seen a lot of their offense in this game. Here comes one, though. We're getting much more decent looks with these long and high hits, but on the other side for John Carroll, they are missing the extensions. They are missing the hits. There's a shot. Nice save as well. That's the best shot John Carroll's had in two games, but for the moment, still sit 0-0. About two minutes gone here in game number three. The series all tied up. 50 win for Slark. He needs to circle back into this ball. I know he probably didn't have boost, but that is a mistake you cannot make. That was probably your best look at an open net all day. And unfortunately, we still sit at 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, weird that he decided to spin off of that there. I mean, he wins the first 50, right? I mean, why not take another chance if you're already lucky at that point? That one's going to circle back out. And I feel like with the way this series has gone this far, we could end each game 1-0, and we might be going to 7. Got to turn around awkwardly and recover on this play. Over 1. Not enough boost or the positioning. That's going to go off the backboard. Who else is going to be there? It's going to get redirected to the corner for the moment. Again, both offenses spending like 6 seconds in the other half in terms of the lower third, and then it gets taken away. So... Not a whole lot that's been orchestrated from either side. It's been basically one hit after one hit after one hit. Other than that, I mean, you guys know the deal. Look at the scoreboard. There's not much that's happened in this game. Is it's very different from the first two that we saw. I mean, it's figuring out how he's going to recover on this play. The rebound falls out and gets dumped to the side at midfield. Benji going to take it off the side while burning so much boost to try to restabilize on the play. 
That ball remained flat, and the defender will easily take it back. To the corner we go, follow up there. Finally, nerf up, and someone scores. It's John Carroll who get lucky. Benji puts that one close enough to the net, and Nerfa in the right position will capitalize on it. Yeah, it just seemed like a ton of action going on in the neutral zone there in the middle of the field. And finally, John Carroll's going to strike. And it's, you know, who else but Nerfa, the one who we haven't really talked about that much, to give his team the lead here with a minute 30 left on the clock. If the pace of play continues the way that it is, Cannon's going to have a rough time because it's just been kind of a, a lot of table tennis going back and forth with the ball. Minute 17. Ooh, I like that touch, but we need the reinforcements to follow up as well. Surely they know that too. It's Greg going to try to play to the corner. John Carroll getting up to meet those hits, and I love that. Here's the extension Whoa. and the miss on the open net. The targeting has not been there for either team today. And they've been able to kind of mask that mistake. Hold on a minute. Been able to mask that mistake with the, the second and third touches. However, we have seen a couple of missed balls here. Comes a follow-up. 40 seconds to go. Cannon High School desperately needing both a goal, but just some momentum. They have been flat in this orange half. Not much to say for John Carroll on the other side, but certainly a goal is better than not having a goal. So 30 seconds to go. Slark, that one could beat the defense. Why would you touch it? No! Oh, no. That was going to be a goal. You Not don't like need this. to redirect it. Oh, paid. That probably would have gone in. Oh, man. Nine seconds. Don't like the harp on negativity, so I will not. But my God. That is just painful. That is, ugh. Gonna keep it up. Anyone else there? Now it's going to touch. Well. Uh, that was gonna be <laughs> that was gonna be a goal, but unfortunately the the communication not quite there at least for the moment for Cannon. So John Carroll up two one in the series, and we moved to game four. Uh, crack shot. I mean, I, I'm not, you know what I'm gonna ask you? What happened on that play? What? Why did? Why did we see that? Why was we that so painful? We can't give him too much for you know touching that it sure there's so many opportunities in rocket league where a ball's floating towards the net i mean the velocity wasn't exactly there so uh unless the the communication was a little bit better he might have thought that you know if i don't touch this somebody's going to save it i you know i need to make some kind of redirection here um and in the heat of the moment again i, I talked about composure obviously it just was not there at that moment and yeah, it's, it's exactly how you said it was going to be. We have a team that comes out, you know, red hot in the first mm -hmm. game. And then now it's just they've gone cold. And John Carroll's controlled, you know, the pace of play. They've controlled their defensive zone very well. They're mounting better attacks than, than Cannon are right now. And Cannon's got to go back to the drawing board and especially mentally reset after that, that you know, failed touch there at the end. I mean, I don't yeah. really know what else to call it. Yeah, again, it's it's unfortunate. Let's get into game four. And, uh, like, we don't like to harp on one one player, two plays, but, again, that's what kind of Rocket League comes down to. You could have, you know, 50 chances in a game, but all it takes is one or two plays to really seal the deal. So it is uh, it is unfortunate. Hopefully that doesn't stifle their ability to score goals throughout the series. It doesn't hurt them and their momentum or, 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 or vibes or whatever you want to call it. But at least for now, they are down 2-1 in the series. That one goes towards the back. And here comes a couple of chances now. Ooh, actually recenter. That should be a goal. So they, they they lose one in the end of game number three. They get one back here. And I guess the universe says, all right, we're even now. Yeah, I mean, that was an assist from, from Slark on two minutes. So giving him back the goal that was taken away from him so horrendously at the end of the previous game. And, uh, you know, that one comes down to Nerfa not really getting a good touch on that ball and mm -hmm. essentially just popping it up for minutes to put home. And what I've seen so far from minutes is that he's not going to miss too many of those. Absolutely not. We're about mm, 40 seconds or so gone here in game four. I don't know. 2 1 series lead for John Carroll. And certainly. I mean, oh, look, they, they certainly have the, the ability, obviously, to score and tie this up 1 1, but we have not seen. Other than maybe game one, we have not seen a lot of high scoring games. I, mean, I think we saw like a 2 0 or 2 1 in game one. Um, everything else has kind of been one goal. So 
I'm not putting my eggs in the basket or the realm of possibility of us seeing four, five, six goals a game like we're used to this weekend. So it really might come down to just one or two goals in this series. If that's the case, they desperately obviously need the first goal to tie up this game. But that might be it for the entire game. So it's, it's a lot more weight and pressure on that one final shot or goal than you would expect. However, Nerfa with the redirect, not quite the, the touch that I think he wanted, Benji. Love the extension. Starting to see the creativity come out for the moment for Cannon High School. We burned about a minute off the clock. And that means that, well, we have a minute less to play here as both teams again in that similar muck as they have been in the first two games. Could this be one? And bumped off the play. It just seems like, you know, other than maybe one or two instances, the offense starts to come for both teams up the field. They settle in in the orange and blue half, and then things kind of break down, things don't go their way, and we just kind of sit here at a dead ball. I mean, we questioned where the vibes were at for for Cannon after that, you know, double touch, redirect, mm. whatever you want to call it, the moment that shall not be mentioned <laughs> in the previous game. Uh, I, I think it's good. I think the vibes are good. They've, they've, you know, put it past them, and I think that they've mentally reset into this game. The way that they're playing is showing me that you know, they're ready to get creative, ready to show some flair in the offensive zone and uh, really just try to dominate the game from a skill standpoint. Mm, that was a great shot right there, but it gets saved away. And now everyone has to fall back in transition. That one's on net, will be touched regardless. Slark gets the goal. I think that even with closing in, I mean, the redirect would have scored. So I don't mind the, the extra effort here. I was actually whiffed in general, but it doesn't matter. That's a goal 2-0. Cannon looking to tie up the series, and with how this game has played out, this might feel like a 5-0. It has just been a very, very tug-of-war type game with not a lot of action other than those two goals. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's that's been the story of this series. I mean, we are blessed in this game to have two very evenly matched teams. I know mm -hmm. that Rocket League is generally more exciting when, you know, teams are putting up a combined, you know, eight to nine goals in a game, but this is just as interesting for me because I'm watching a defensive battle take place and, you know, watching both teams having to step up in their defensive zone. And nice one from Jack there. He's at least going to keep his team alive. That's two to one. And I love the long distance shooting now coming out. Right over both defenders. I think it actually touched Slark, but it didn't have enough to, to, to take it off its path and um, rearrange the trajectory of that ball. So we sit at 2-1. John Carroll within one now. Jack gets taken off, or actually, excuse me, takes out minutes on the play, but the ball still falls into the orange half. And again, retaining possession is going to be John Carroll's biggest strong suit going into the last minute or so of this game. How do they elect to do it? Do they get physical, or do they try to just outflank and outpace everyone on the field? For the moment, though, a big booming clear comes out. Benji going to circle back to midfield. And he should be able to recover on this play. He will. Skies it. Minutes is going to get up to meet it. Got to be able to meet that ball in the air as well. Would have loved to see Jack go up for the aerial, maybe try to take that one back and send it into the other corner. Here comes a follow-up shot. That's a goal, and that might be the dagger. Slark, 3-1, Cannon High School. Uh, making that other goal from John Carroll look null and void. Yeah, this game has absolutely been the redemption arc of Slark. That's what I'll call it. I like that. I like that a lot. It also rhymes, so I like that even more. We keep going. 60 seconds now left in game number four. Cannon High School looking to tie it up 2-2 in the series, which means we're guaranteed a game six, which... We have seen a couple of times this weekend, but we have not seen a series end in six games. We've either gone seven or we've gone four. There is no in between. Actually, we've gone four one as well. So I lied. Oh, well. 49 seconds. Bring this one down. There's a ball. There, there's a dunk, I think. I'm not sure if it touched anyone, but it doesn't matter. I'll call it a dunk anyway. Three, two. And Benji takes it out of the corner. Where has this been all game? The individual plays. Taking it over the defender and making it just a one goal game. Uh, you know, first it was Jack with that kind of deceptive flip goal and then Benji coming out of the corner in what looked like a relatively harmless play and he puts it in the back of the net. I mean, Cannon's got to be careful because they're not out of it yet. 37 seconds. Only one goal game. Here comes the follow-up and again, you just need to limit the shots that Cannon has. If you want a chance of tying this one up, 28 to go. Ooh, gonna fall down and pinched as well, but send her back out. And now you need to get this ball away, Benji. Not sure how he wants to read it. The pinch doesn't work. A little bit too far in front of the ball coming off the ceiling. 
They win the 50, though. Nerf up, gonna keep it up. Okay, here's a chance. Center back out. Who's there? That could have been close, but the defender gets up right in the lane. The pinch as well almost kept up, and it almost works out for him. That had three good looks at the net, just not able to get that minute cross in. And that means that we say that 2-2 in this series, and more importantly, Cannon School uh, outscoring their mistakes. You had seven shots and two goals at one moment, but my God. 2-2 uh, in the series. At this moment, I think it's just unfair to call the series. I, I don't know who's going to win it, but I do have a feeling we might be going seven. We might almost just have to put that in the back of our heads and, you know, consider this a brand new best of three because at this point, it's anybody's game. Uh, it just it comes out to, you know, I think the team that scored first has won each of the games so far. So that opening goal uh, is just is very, very important. I really did like to see the individual plays coming out. I, I hope that they, you know, start the game with that and don't and not all six players in the server saving it for the last 60 seconds. Uh, yeah. That'd be nice to see. But you know cannon they held on there and you know slark had a really massive game i mean definitely a, a, a big game for him to have definite for his confidence especially after how that you know previous game finished with him touching that ball uh it was a pretty good game from cannon but ultimately they they can't fall asleep at the wheel once they have the lead because that last you know 10 seconds there there was you know you mentioned there was two or three good chances for john carroll and it, you don't really want to be giving him that those kinds of chances because eventually you're going to get burned Absolutely. Well, let's get into game five. Let's see who's going to take the series 3-2 and be knocking on a match point series point and be close to closing it out eventually 4-2 because that's how series work. But also, uh, we might be going seven. I have a feeling this one might go the distance, just how back and forth it has been. But the momentum at the moment is on Cannon High School's side. Again, they said blue John Carroll and your orange. And the winner of this will represent the Eastern Region, or more importantly, they will be the champions of the Eastern Region of the High School Circuit of the Play vs. Fall 2020 Rocket League Championship. Remember to sign up for the Spring Series. The Spring uh, our deadline, I believe, is in a couple of weeks, but Spring uh, roster signups and signups in general are live. So go ahead, playverses.com, and sign up with your team for a chance to compete in tournaments like this and uh, represent some of the best high school players in the country and then eventually get scouted for the CRL. Slark going to send that towards the side wall and gets so successfully. It leaves it up to minutes. Who else is going to be there for the extension? Back down we go. Big challenge in the front of the box. Goes the way of John Carroll. And more importantly, they win the race to the extension. However, gets intercepted, sent back the other way. And a couple of times when this ball has moved far up into the ceiling, we've seen both defenders from either side a little bit hesitant to meet it and wondering if they're going to play reactionary defense for the moment, though. Both teams struggling to either get this ball advanced towards oh, the no. net or get it out. A couple of second, third chance shots, and that looks like that might be the offense there. Here comes a follow-up again, saved out to the corner. So the offense slows for the moment, and it looks like Cannon High School might be thinking about rotating back on defense, and they will. Now right back the other way. I mean, that was those are some panicked moments on defense from John Carroll, and that's not what you want to see from a team that, uh, from what, what we've seen so far, is mostly defensive-minded. Certainly has been. A couple of close shots as well. We just need a long clear. That's the clear they needed. But it keeps getting taken away, and they can't meet the ball in the air. So John Carroll's struggling with these aerials and reading the ball before it gets sent up. Which again, it is not something we expect the players to be able to do at this level quite yet, but it definitely has helped other teams. A nice cross-body shot falling away from the play as Greg finds the first goal of the game. He gets the ball deep, gets the ball to the net, and you know, when you, when you get in front of the net, Greg is going to be the beneficiary. There are good things happen. you got to go to the dirty areas. 2.53 to play. It's a 1-0 lead for Cannon. They would take the series 3-2 if they win this game. For John Carroll, not out of it by any stretch. Just, you know, you need to, you need to start, again, sounds dumb, outscoring your mistakes. Problem is, is they're not meeting the challenges in the air, so you have to be able to be confident with keeping the ball on the ground. The flip oh. there and a, another missed opportunity. Could have just turned his car into the net and would have had a goal, but still, again, just small mistakes that can be fixed if you go back and practice. Yeah, I hope these guys go back and watch the tape and, you know, study up on what they can do better. Uh, obviously, ones like that are, are, I think those are more one-off mistakes, and it's going to be hard to look at that and 
say, okay, this is what I need to improve is, is scoring when I'm all alone against zero players on the goal line with the ball. Uh, that, that, one's, that one's tough for minutes, but uh, it's definitely one that could come back to bite them if John Carroll's able to tie this up. Certainly so. Big demo in the net, so three to advantage. And now the power play is dead. The follow-up, though, continues for John Carroll. It's the turtling of the defense. Starts scrunching up for Cannon High School. Slark trying to get this out. Not a great touch, but it does kind of enough. We'll circle back into the play, grabbing full boost in the corner. Nerfa will grab the midfield. That one is extended. And every time the ball lands somewhere, you have someone from Cannon High School at least getting a like the foot of their wheel on it, getting some kind of touch. So it cuts off the opportunity that John Carroll would have to, to really start orchestrating a play. That's something that on the other side we haven't seen for John Carroll. They let the ball come to them, whereas Cannon are reacting to each hit. That one's going to come down sharply. That could be a goal. It will be. Nerfa, great reaction, and as well, great recognition. There's no need to get fancy with the shot. Just put up one, and it works. Yeah, I'm surprised here. Like, the way he just puts it right over both defenders. You got two in the net blocking that bottom right-hand corner of the net. And yeah, you're right, Nerfa just keeps it simple. That's exactly what you need to do in a situation like that. It's all tied up at one, a minute on the clock. And again, this is anybody's game. I really do have a feeling this one's going the distance at this point. Yeah, I would not be surprised if it does. I mean, we've seen we've seen game sevens that look eerily similar to how this series has been. And if, any, if this weekend is a testament to anything, it is to trust the gut. And the gut says we're probably going to go seven. So I'm going to stick with that prediction. Jack and try to keep it up on the hood. Flips it over one. Is anyone else there? Nerfa going to punch it in. Two, one. And with how little the offense has been present on the field in the last 30 or so seconds, it's these small individual plays that create the opportunity. And John Carroll up 2-1. Yeah, Jack's been really deceptive up that right wing so far in this game and uh, in the previous games as well. I mean, he's been a tool of their offense. You know, not one player necessarily stepping up and looking super flashy. Uh, for John Carroll, but I really like the way that Jack has been controlling this right wing side of the field. Breakaway chance. 20 seconds to go. There's the cross. This one's dangerous. It's taken up at the top of the key. I love that play. Finally, John Carroll getting out to meet the ball, and that helps their defense. Let's go the length of the field. There's a shot, and that's going to be game 3 1. John Carroll will take the series lead as well. They're going to be up 3 2. Now all the pressure is on Cannon here, so John Carroll's going to be looking at this next game, licking their lips, hoping that they can, you know, come out with the first goal. And this will be the first game where we saw Cannon score the first goal, and then they weren't able to generate anything following that. It's just been John Carroll going back to basics and keeping it simple, and that's exactly what they needed to do. With that, game will be over. Can't score two goals in one second. I've tried. It doesn't work. 3-2. John Carroll take the series lead. And again, it was all of Cannon School for the, mo for the most part in like the first four minutes of that game. Four shots for Slark. But, you know, they they stayed they stayed calm, cool, collected. The resolve was there. They, they take it in the final 30 seconds or so. And uh, now they're up 3-2, knocking on taking the series 4-2. And that would not do justice to how close the series really has been. But... Uh, but yeah, I definitely see this one at least. I think if can come out and you know they score a goal or two, we could be seeing seven games. Yeah, absolutely. This one, that one's got to be just wiped from the memories of Cannon because I think that's the worst that they've looked defensively so far in this series. Um, you know, there's been Cannon's been a back and forth team. At some moments in this series, they've looked absolutely dominant, and then at other moments, they, you know, you're what are you doing? What kind of moments uh, where it just it looks very disjointed, lots of panic in how they're playing. Um, but really, I mean, I think the consistency factor is going to be what wins it for one of these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. Well, here comes game number six. Series 3-2. John Carroll have the lead. Will they win it 4-2? Or will we go to game seven? Do Cannon High School have what it takes to send this one to a decisive final game? We can only wait and see. But at the moment, you have to favor them in the early game with how they've been able to control the field. Speaking of which, there's a shot. A little bit high as well, but on the other side, John Carroll clutching up in the late game for either team. And it might only take one goal, so you're desperately looking for that first goal to kind of set the mood and the tone here for game number six. We'll end here. We have not seen a series end 4-2 this weekend from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now Sunday. So 
it would be nice to at least see some some difference in in the series count for a lot of these teams but regardless i just hope that we get a good game and that's what we, we gotta hope for i mean these two teams have been incredibly evenly matched so far in this series and now the pressure's all on cannon we'll see what they can do i like that these gamers are playing the body a little bit more towards the end of this series it shows a little bit of grit and i like that they look like they're they're much more locked in than they were in the first couple of games benji that one's on target but it should be saved away easily it will be to the corner we go that one's gonna sky itself back to midfield jack second touch be there no nope. would have hit the crossbar regardless about a minute burned off this clock. Here's a follow-up shot. Great angle on that one. If minutes was not in the center of the net, that's probably a goal. But here comes the second chance. And now we're starting to see John Carroll get up to the ball in midfield and keep it in the air, which again was something we did not see a lot of in the start of this series. So they are they are adapting on the field. They are hitting the hard regain. And even with the lead, they're getting much more aggressive than I'm used to. I like seeing that. Into the corner we go. There's a demo. Members advantage to John Carroll, but no one's here to intercept. Letting Slark move all the way upfield with it and win the 50 as well. This one slows in favor of Cannon High School. And not a great flip. Not much power behind that shot with only 10 boost. Minutes is still getting involved on the play. That one's long and away. Great redirect to get it to the corner and save a goal. It's another one of those situations where John Carroll's really been controlling this game. That's a nice demo and a deep shot. A double demo. No one there to put it home, though, Jack absolutely paving a path for his team but no one's there behind him to back him up on it still i like to see this look at all these demos it's carnage across the field at this point sometimes you do need those demos to obviously open the lane but the demos have to equate to something empty demos don't do much for a team if you don't use that as a stepping stool towards moving in and, and finding a hit there's a shot great oh. save Jack with the best save of the series so far as a double commit leaves the ball right back to Cannon and they will retain possession. They're going to take it off the sidewall. Slark carrying towards the backboard, swinging it back down to the corner. Greg going to try to recenter and the intercept keeps Cannon in possession of this ball. We go back to the blue half. We cut it off. Slark is there, burning boost to continue the play. Trying to swing it around, almost able to. And again, this one skies towards the center that back corner 145 to go no one scored yet that one's off target just a little bit far to the right we burned a lot of time in this game six i honestly don't know who it's going to be the demos have favored cannon high school but this score has favored no one and that's the thing is uh, i'm one of the people in the school of thought of rocket league that if you're in a you know uh, a potential match point situation that's going against you you don't really want to let it go to overtime because that that single goal being in the back of your mind that that you know one goal one bad bounce and it's all over for us i don't know i it, it seems harder to play like that for me sure 60 seconds as well about five to give on the clock that one's going to come down who's going to be there to meet it off target again would have been a goal and they've been towards the center of the net. The targeting has not really been there for either team, aside from two or three instances. Still, 0-0. Zero, zero. Slark going to take it off the ceiling, bringing it right back down. I love the 50 win, but uh, a little bit out, far, out and far in front of the net. Would have worked if he was closer towards the goal line. 38 seconds to go. Not a great touch for John Carroll. However, they will extend. Who's going to score first? That's essentially the only question that matters at this moment. 30 seconds carrying a Slark. Very little boost. By little, I mean none. I think he grabbed back corner as well. So they're going to send that one back down. Is the cross there? Yes. Will it connect? No. Follow-up shot. Recentered. And a long clear. That saves John Carroll for the moment. We're probably going to OT at this point. Here comes a challenge. Not going to work. Now you have to fall back in defense. Two members back. Slark. Three touches. Saved off. Here comes minutes, touches, and we're going to go to OT. Overtime for the first time in the series. And I mean, maybe that's surprising given how evenly matched these two teams are. But no one finding the back of the net yet here. And it's just one goal for John Carroll that could do in this series. And they've got to, you know, I mean, on the flip side of things, obviously the pressure is on Cannon to try to stay alive. But maybe John Carroll's going to feel a little bit of pressure here saying like, you know, we're this close. We can almost taste it. And we said that earlier, that all, sometimes it may just be one goal in the series, so that one goal could be so 
uh, it, can, it can hold so much weight, I guess is, is the phrase there. But uh, that one's going to sky back down. And the breakaway chance for Slark. 1v1 gets oh. it, and that's the goal. Cannon will tie up the series, and they're going to send this to a game seven. Slark's been kind of dialed in ever since that, you know, misstep that we kept, kept talking about that I, I want to stop bringing up, but somehow it keeps circling back to in my head here. Slark's been very dialed in, though. I really like his play so yep. far. He's been driving the offense for his team, uh, where, you know, Greg, Greg is more of a uh, defensive player, and Minutes is kind of there in the center. Uh, I really like the way that Slark has driven his team here to victory in this game. Yeah, he had the one juggle that he had was just the most important one, able to get it over the midfield defense, and then again, uh, flipping it over the back line uh, defender. Again, it was just it was impressive to see uh, the individual play again step up for either team. But we go into game seven now, and I wonder. Um, Honestly, I can't call this game at all. I can't call this series at all. I think that it's going to come down to just one player making a play. It sounds dumb, but if Slark can do what he did and step up, sure, that will probably be the series. But on the other side, I mean, just looking in general, you need Jack or Benji, someone, to kind of step up and run IGL for this team and run through the field. I mean, every game seven needs a hero, right? Yeah. They absolutely do. 44. Four minutes to go. John Carroll... Again, having to turtle a little bit with a long clear. Finally comes out for them. Winner of this is the champion of the Eastern Region of the high school circuit. Will it be Cannon High School? Will it be John Carroll? Who knows at this moment? As that one goes to the corner in the blue half, we'll follow in with it. Slark going to send it back to midfield. Almost a minute gone here in Game 7. And again, this is how the series has been. It has not been until the final minute or 30 seconds of game where we started to see goals and real, real solid action come out. The first four minutes are usually spent throwing what you can at the dartboard. If something sticks, we try it again. If it doesn't work, then we think about something else. But for the moment, we just kind of send this ball back and forth for both teams. They're trying to get creative in the middle there for Cannon, but I think they need to take a page out of John Carroll's playbook there that gave them the 3-2 to two lead in the series, which was they kept it really simple. They stuck to their fundamentals and... That was exactly what they needed to do to win this this series. Of course, the creativity has been key for uh, Cannon at this point, but maybe they they you know flip the switch a little bit and turn the tables. There's a shot. That's going to be the goal too. Minutes finally. That's the first goal of the series for minutes. Comes at a pivotal really? time. I think it might be. You should see him hit the ball so much. I'd be I'm really surprised. I think you're you're probably right. So we've seen we've seen I think Greg with one goal, we've seen Slark with a couple, but again the series has only been one or two goals a piece. That's it. I think that might be Minutes' first goal. And speaking of which, I mean you needed someone obviously to st step up for either side. Slark has done the majority of that. Second touch going to be there? No, but you'll find the first goal in Game Seven. And Cannon, who were down three-two, looking to win the last two games and take the series. Minutes has just been such a mechanically solid player for Cannon. You just don't think about the fact that he hadn't found the back of the net yet. It's great that, to see him get on the board here. 2.52 to go. Both double commits as teammates run into each other. Go to the corner. Slark. And bring it over one. Keep it up as well. We've seen him do this a couple of times. Gets taken off the play. The physicality starting to come out for John Carroll. There's the cross. Cut off. There's a shot, saved away by Slark again, comes off respawn and gets it out as well. He has really stepped up for this team. Yeah, Slark and Minutes are definitely both putting in a lot of work here. Greg, I'd like to see Greg get involved physically, you know, go for a few more demos, bumps, and, you know, cause a little bit of commotion in front of the net and allow, you know, the skill players on his team to, to do what they do a little bit more uh, freely in front of the net. 180 seconds left here in game seven. Slark almost had the second touch. That one's crossed down. And we've seen that cross come in a couple of times. It has not connected yet in this series. I do like what I'm seeing. Only a one goal game. What else is new though? There's a demo. The extension left up to minutes. There's almost <laughs> a call. The Jack comes in at the nick of time and saves it away to keep it one out. 
Jack's had a couple of those now, and that one might turn out to be series saving at this point if John Carroll are able to turn this one around. They missed the cross on that. The ball goes back to midfield. The one colliding. Not much has happened. It's just been kind of testing the water for, for John Carroll and seeing, okay, where are we going to be at midfield? How do we orchestrate a hit? For the moment, though, they need to retain possession. Someone needs to go for this ball. Indecisiveness, it looks like. That's usually a communication issue, but still, someone has to make up a decision. Jack going to come back. Never mind. They'll try to get to this ball. He'll do it. And we've sat in this corner for about 10 seconds. Finally taken out. 49 seconds to go. With all this indecisiveness, the fact that it's still a 1-0 game is surprising. Slark, again, cutting it off, winning the 50 as well. Jack trying to slow Ooh. it. It was going to go in. If he didn't touch it, he touches it, and it just gives it a little bit extra boost. And 2-0 lead might be it with how this series has gone. Minutes steps up, and there's not much Jack could do in that situation other than being able to read that hit and flip yeah. before. It's a 2-0 lead, and I think that means Cannon will take the series. That was a really valiant effort by Jack. That was the ones that is kind of like a feels bad man because he hits a near perfect half flip in the nick of time. Like to, to do the millisecond reaction that you need to do to execute that mechanic is it's pretty tough. And the fact that it still goes in, it's kind of a dagger. I mean, speaking of daggers, Slark's going to put yep. one in top cheese. That is exactly how you want to finish the series if you're a cannon here. And I think, I think maybe we have found our champion. And with that, 3-0, 21 seconds. That's the most goals we've seen in this entire series for one team. Actually, I think we saw a 3-1 earlier. But still, we've tied the record. That's what counts. 18 seconds. And at this moment, I think this one's done. With only 10 seconds to go, should this shot be saved? It will be blocked out. No one else is there. Jack can't get there in time. Five seconds to go. You can't score three goals in this amount of time. That's it. And Cannon School, or Cannon High School, I should say, will be your champions. The High School Rocket League champions of the Eastern Region. Congratulations to Slark, Greg, and Minutes. Yeah, I mean, great series. The fact that they were down 3-2 to two in this series and the resolve it takes to come back from that, you know, props to these guys. Slark had an absolutely massive series. I mean, he had one major misstep that you know cost them a chance at a game and you know it's really good to see a player bounce back from that and not get down on themselves because he was an absolutely integral piece of Cannon's comeback story there and I really like to see that yeah he was kind of the MVP of that matchup until game seven when minutes really stepped up with two goals and uh <clears throat> you know not a whole lot to break down in that series it was back and forth and the game seven told us the most about just honestly who had the most resolve who had the better offense it was the Cannon High School. So with that said, again, we congratulate Cannon High School, uh, all those boys for putting on a great show in Game 7 and securing the victory to represent and be the champions of the Eastern Region. And that means that we have coming up next Central Region High School. This is Carmel High School Gold versus Carmel High School Blue. So regardless, if you're a Carmel High School resident, fan, attendee, you're walking away a champion. But we'll see which roster does it the best when we come back from this commercial break. <laughs> 